next birth also will be in a peaceful place enjoyable place and full of happiness if that incident which is taken up the mind at this is something unpleasant or say for instance if it makes the person unhappy or angry you will see the reactions of that person at that moment sometimes become violent and sometimes become restless and sometimes show some unhappy sign and sometimes behave with fear and some would have violent death because of the fact that the incident remembered by the person at that time was unpleasant thing done by that person during the lifetime if the death occurred on that spot the next the birth will take in an unhappy state where the person will suffer pain and misery so therefore it is very important for us to do good things to avoid bad things because there is a rebirth and that happens according to the deeds or life style that we have here and therefore we must do good things avoid bad things the quotation i had taken from the text i explain to you avoid doing bad things do good things and these two aspects now we have examined in short we have seen unwholesome actions and also we have seen wholesome actions dana sila bhavana practicing generosity practicing morality and practicing meditation i would like to say few words about meditation because it is very important and also widely practiced now throughout the world here in the buddha's advice it says purify the mind that is the word the purify purify the mind that is the word used by the buddha in this um, in this advice it, it here it doesn't say meditation but it says purify your mind and purifying the mind is meditation so i know most of you who are here are practicing meditation especially under the corporate body of the buddha education foundation and under the venerable chandima i know the many of you are practicing meditation here this word meditation in english gives us very superficial meaning of the word bhavana bhavana means development cultivation cultivation or development of what the development of mind of development of body in other words the development qualities qualities of the mind and quality of the body that is bhavana we have qualities in our mind both good and bad good qualities are loving kindness compassion sympathy charity benevolence and such good things we have to develop these qualities when we develop good quality bad qualities are 
subdued or sometimes sublimated and sometimes completely eradicated. What are the bad qualities such as anger, hatred, arrogance, pride and these are the bad qualities of the mind. When we develop loving kindness, anger is reduced. When we develop compassion, cruelty is reduced. When we, when we develop sympathetic joy, jealousy is reduced. And you can see when, good, when one thing is developed, the other thing is reduced. Once at a time, there cannot be, exist two thoughts in one's mind. In other words, no one can have anger and love together at once, at the same time. When the love and kindness is there, we have to develop that in our mind. When we continue, if we continue it, as long as we can, so long, anger is not there. When we develop our compassionate feeling, as long as we develop that, the cruelty is not there. And in this way, that development of good qualities is considered as bhavana. That development has to be done throughout the day, all the time. Development here means to maintain that feeling throughout the day or as long as one can maintain it. If one can maintain loving thought, compassionate thought, sympathetic thought all the time or as much of the day there is no occasion for that person to do anything harmful to the others and some people think when they use the word meditation meditation is nothing but sitting somewhere in a corner leg crossed and keep eyes closed and waiting for something to dawn upon them. Sitting motionlessly is also a part of meditation. We, we practice that. We all do that. But we have to do it with understanding that bhavana has to be continued not only while sitting but also while walking while working, while talking, while cooking, while washing and while doing everything. In other words, for example, to practice loving feeling in our thought, O Metta, O Maitri, loving kindness and compassion should be in our minds not only while sitting, but also while walking, working and doing everything. If one is able to maintain one's mind in this way, that person becomes a blessing to the society, that mind. person becomes a blessing to the family and that person becomes a blessing to human beings as well as to non-human beings, to all. When we talk about bhavana in detail, we have two forms of meditation, or two forms of bhavana, samatha meditation and vipassana meditation. Samatha meditation means, uh, samatha, the function of samatha meditation is to calm down our emotions. 
vipassana meditation is insight meditation which gives us understanding about the nature of ourselves and about the world you will learn these meditations from venerable chandi mahya now in this way the buddhist way of life is a life to live all the time all places not in one place not at a time a day it is for all all the time summarize what the buddha said not to do evil to do good and purify the mind and these are the things that we the things that we try to examine in this short period of time not to do evil to do good and purify the mind evil things i have explained as killing stealing committing adultery telling lies and taking intoxicating drinks and drugs to do good things i explain practice in generosity or giving 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 material things and giving life that means giving fearlessness to others and also giving dhamma and this is the good thing and to purify the mind we said it is bhavana or what meditation all these three, all these three things are to be done daily all the in this way if one lives according to these things that one's life becomes peaceful to individual as well as to the society so i am not going to continue any longer i have explained or i have given enough material for you to think of as buddhist practices for daily life and i would be quite happy to answer the questions if you have any so before i conclude i would like to express my grateful thanks to venerable chandima nayakathera and also to the corporate body of the buddha education foundation and all those who are responsible for organizing this meeting tonight may you all be well happy and peaceful may no harm come to you may no difficulty come to you may no problem come to come to you may you always meet with success peace happiness and prosperity and good luck may you have understanding the life and it this attitude may you have determination and courage to meet with and overcome the inevitable difficulties problems and failures in life as we buddhists aspire may we all attain the everlasting happiness what we say the buddhahood or nibbana thank you ya ano arar me kaathari katha karna kota ar yana yata apta me ekan hiti aprasanna bhayak athi wenna katha karama eka aithi no kiyala ar me musa vada walta etukota kohomada eka api wenas kalla me handina ganne aprasadayak athi wenna te wenna gena kota katha karna kota if you yourself realize that you are speaking with unpleasant tone that itself gives you the understanding that it is unpleasant and it is unskillful 
if you are speaking to someone with unpleasant feeling you can't do it with loving kindness that means you yourself feel that you are irritated that means irritation means anger and without anger without irritation you can't speak to another person to get irritated and so therefore that understanding itself makes you feel that you are doing something bad on such situation better pause a little while and consider am i right to say this and create try to create loving feeling in your mind in your heart any time if you are going to speak with anger or resentment you can't speak pleasant word you can't speak kind word ya at sao konna kiyo me ane asta kiyanne root ya asta kiyo te ayeko pili ganne ne hai eki ap asusuru right the question is this someone is telling the truth but the listener gets irritated having heard the truth the person gets uh, agitated irritated the fact can be correct but still we have to use our conscience whether it is right place to say if it brings unpleasantness or unhappiness to the listener don't say so don't say it. say in other words when you are walking along the road you may find someone who is ugly it is a true fact can you say to that person you can you go to that person to say oh you are ugly although it is the truth keep it to yourself there are many truthful things but still we have to keep silence if it is unwelcome by the other if it is hurting other don't say don't speak that this in in this respect the buddha was the best example to us buddha said to us the fact may be true if it is well unwelcome or displeasing displeasing others or creating this harmony among the individuals to not to speak and there may be some facts which are untrue but pleasing others don't say that because it is untrue and in this way say if it goes a little further if it is true welcome by the other pleasing others tell it if there has nothing to be said in that nature keep noble silence in our in the, in the teachings of the buddha it says this in in this way say something useful beneficial or pleasing and also true if you don't have anything of that nature keep noble silence the buddha aryo va tumhi bhavo aryo va tumhi bhavo that means the noble silence in explaining the word so unskillful words so unpleasant the the unwholesome words there it has been divided into four lying slander backbiting gossip and there are some people 
or not some people, many people, they can't stop talking. They talk all the time, all the time. They don't know how to stop talking. They talk to others and they talk to themselves. And when you keep talking, talking and talking and talking, that's what you said of the gossip. All the gossip are included. I included slander, backbiting, and lying, harsh words. 